Hey everyone, it's Jenny and welcome back to my channel. This story ain't over. Today I thought it would be fun to do a little video recommending some lovely books that you can snuggle up with this fall slash winter for the holiday season, for the colder months of the year. I know for me from November to March, the evenings are a total write-off. I just want to snuggle up with a blanket and some tea or hot chocolate or coffee and just read a good book. This is definitely the season where I get my most reading done as well. Growing up, I always looked forward to to Christmas holidays because it was like the one time of year where I had uninhibited reading time. So for this video, I have a few different categories of books that you can snuggle up with this winter. I've got some spooky, mysterious, and fast-paced books that you can pick up. And then I've also got some slower, magical fantasy books to pick up. And then finally, I have a few of my favorite classics that I think are always great to pick up during this time of year. As you're watching the video, definitely let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. And also let me know if there's any books that you know I haven't read that you think I would enjoy snuggling up with this winter. Alrighty, first up we have The Goth House Experiment by S.J. Sindhu. I absolutely love S.J. Sindhu as a writer. She is a Tamil author and she wrote Marriage of a Thousand Lies, Blue Skin Gods, and also a graphic novel called Shakti. I am a huge fan of her two previous novels and they just hit me deep at my core. But this is a very different book of hers. It is a short story collection full of a bunch of spooky but also queer stories. And all of them feel a little bit surreal in some ways. And a few of them even have some speculative elements to them. And I think the reason I would recommend this for this time of year is just because it's a really nice collection to just snuggle up with. A lot of the stories are ones that you can just get completely lost in and it just has some really great representation in it as well. And honestly, this is the short story collection that got me back into short story collections. So I highly recommend it. Next up, I have a book that I read recently and absolutely adored and now I need to recommend it to everyone. And that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is obviously a very popular book on TikTok. It was originally self-published and then a traditional publisher actually picked it up for publishing. And I honestly just fell into the story because it just sucks you in, in a way that is just so compelling. And it's one of those books that you can just sit and read for hours and finish in a single night. Basically we take the perspective of one of Dracula's brides, Constanta, and she's writing this like long letter to Dracula, addressing him in the second person. And she's sort of telling her story and what happened and how she came to be with Dracula and all the things that happened afterwards. And the book is filled with queer characters, there's a polyamorous relationship, and it also takes us through time through multiple centuries. And I think that's the part that makes it feel like a book that you can snuggle up with because I personally just love books that take us through like a long period of time and show us how things change. And you feel like you are getting a lifetime within a book. I absolutely love the narration for this book and the relationship between the several characters. If you're looking for something that's slightly thrilling, slightly seductive, but also really beautiful, this is definitely a book to pick up. Speaking of vampires, another book that I think is great to snuggle up with is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This book has the word book club in it and I think that just gives you a sign of how it could be a snuggly read. This is definitely more of a horror novel though and it basically follows this suburban mom in the 90s I believe and she is sort of trying to protect her children and the people of the town when this mysterious man comes to town and she starts to figure out that he may be in fact a vampire. And so she, along with the other suburban moms in her book club, try to sort of protect their children and figure out a way to get rid of him. This is one of those books that's absolutely hilarious, but also really spooky and dark. And I think it's one of those books that you will just like come to every evening after work and just like be excited to get back into and finish. It's one of the more longer books on this list, but it is definitely one that keeps your attention. And I had such a great time with it when I read it a few falls ago. Now, similarly, the next book also follows a suburban mom, and that is Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. This is a book I read recently and absolutely fell in love with. It is such a fun and compelling book, and it's one that just really follows this regular mom who gets herself embroiled in this sticky situation involving like contract killers and bounties and a whole lot of messiness. The main character is a struggling writer who's been recently divorced and she's trying to take care of her kids. What I love about this book is that it is both very mysterious and dark, but also very lighthearted and funny and entertaining as hell. This is one of those books that you could just sit down with and read in a single night and just have such a great time with it. It is the first book in a series and I'm on the third one right now and it's going great. And if you are planning to pick this one up, I highly recommend the audiobook because the narrator is just 
just fantastic. Speaking of mysteries, another thriller slash mystery that you should definitely pick up for this winter is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This is one of my favorite thrillers, even though I don't really read that many thrillers, so take this with a grain of salt. But this is a reunion thriller, I would say. It follows several different characters who used to go to college together, and there was a mysterious death that happened while they were in college, and one person in the group sort of got blamed, but there's no real proof. And then many years later, they're meeting at a reunion and they're sort of revisiting what happened back then. And each of them is sort of telling their side of the story and you're trying to figure out who actually killed the person back then. The reason I think this is a fun one to snuggle up with is because it's such a compelling mystery. You really wanna know what happens next. There's a lot of drama involved as well. And it has this element of just like looking back on life and all of your regrets. And I think that's one of the things that makes it more of a cozy read and one that you wanna curl up with. Alrighty, now before we get into the next book, one thing that I absolutely love doing during this time of year, during the winter, especially when I'm like at home more often and I just feel like catching up on like hobbies and things that I usually would like to do but I don't really have time for in the summer when I'm like going out. And I also find it to be a time when I want to like refresh on a lot of my skills, especially when it comes to work or just my personal life. And this is where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members who all come together to take the next step in their creative journey. I've been using Skillshare for years and I absolutely love the depth and breadth of classes that they have available. Skillshare has classes on topics from illustration to graphic design, photography, music, marketing, productivity, creative writing, anything that you can think of, there's probably a class for it on Skillshare. Whether you're looking to pick up a new hobby and learn the basics of like watercolor painting or, you know, illustration, or whether you're trying to upgrade yourself in a creative career or start a new business, there are so many classes that can help you achieve those goals. Skillshare has classes in freelancing, entrepreneurship, UI and UX design, as well as marketing, social media, and productivity. I personally myself learned how to edit on Final Cut Pro by taking a class on Skillshare by Ali Abdal. Recently, Ali Abdal also put out a Notion Masterclass online class on Skillshare that I'm so excited to check out. It's all about maximizing your productivity and organization with Notion. I'm a frequent user of Notion and I use it to plan all of my content for my channel. So I'm so excited to take this class this winter. So with all that said, if you're interested in Skillshare, whether you're trying to start a new hobby or trying to level up a creative side hustle, the first 500 people who use the link in my description will actually get a one month free trial of Skillshare today. You can get access to all of Skillshare's classes for free by being one of the first 500 people to click the link in my description and get a one month free trial on Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into the next book, which is The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina by Zoraida Cordova. This is one of my favorite sort of spooky, speculative books to read. It is so atmospheric and it basically follows this one major matriarch of this massive family and we follow her through early parts of her life and then also in the current timeline when she invites her entire family to her funeral in order to collect their inheritance. This book like some of the other ones is both spooky and involves a lot of characters but also takes us through a long period of time and we're seeing characters grow up and go through several trials and tribulations and really grow from that. This one is just so cozy in my opinion because there's just so many family elements involved and you're just really rooting for the characters, but you're also just kept reading along because you wanna know what happens next. Next up, I wanna recommend Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is definitely a very fall book to read, but I think it's also a wintry book to read. The book is actually set over multiple semesters at Yale, and one of the semesters is in winter. We follow our main character, Alex Stern, who is sort of plucked out of obscurity and given the opportunity of a lifetime to go to Yale, but she has to be part of the Ninth House of Yale, which is involved in occult and supernatural activities and the ninth house sort of regulates the other houses and secret societies of Yale as they embark on these different supernatural and occult activities. And so Alex is the new Dante learning from her counterpart the Virgil but we are meeting her in two different timelines one where she starts at school and one many months later when a murder has happened near campus and she's trying to figure out what's happened. This book is definitely one that starts off slow but really picks up later on. I reread this last fall and absolutely loved it. 
it. I think it was even better the second time around. And something about the atmosphere and just the mystery of it makes it a really cozy read, in my opinion. And it's definitely one that you can just like fall right into and just like forget everything else that's happening. The next book is one that I think is just the perfect like fall winter read, and that is Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is one of my favorite books ever, and it tackles so many incredible themes and has some of the most endearing characters. But essentially, Babel follows our main character, Robin, and it's set in the 1800s in this alternate version of our world where the British colonial system and empire is sort of held up by translation magic. Our main character, Robin Swift, is sort of plucked out of obscurity in China and brought to England as a ward of this very powerful man. And when he comes of age, he is enrolled at Oxford at the fictional Translation Institute, which is in this giant tower called Babel. This is a book that is both like a campus novel and buildings Roman, but also one that is very revolutionary in spirit and very anti-colonial in spirit and really explores themes of violence and etymology and the power of translation. I feel like you can't read this book without falling in love with the main characters and the friendship that blooms between them. And I feel like it's such a cozy read that feels like you're returning to familiar friends. Alrighty, with that said, let's jump into the classics that I think are just really great to cozy up with for the winter and fall. So first up I have a tried and true favorite of mine which is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I can never get enough of Jane Austen and just the way she writes romances. They feel so realistic to me even though they are set in a completely different time period from right now. And obviously Pride and Prejudice is my favorite one. I just love the sort of hate to love romance that happens with Elizabeth and Darcy. Similarly but also differently I really love Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is a book that is again kind of similar to Babel in the sense of the buildings Roman, like it follows a main character from when they're a child into much later in their adulthood. And this features a main character named Jane Eyre who becomes a governess at the mysterious home of this man named Mr. Rochester. And there's a bit of a romance that blooms there, but it's also a book about just like her finding her inner strength, I think. It's got a lot of creepy gothic elements elements to it as well, which makes it a pretty fun read and a cozy one as well, in my opinion. And it's definitely very, very spooky. And then the last classic that I think is perfect for this time of year is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is one of my favorite books ever, and I think it's because of the very reflective and contemplative tone of the book. It basically follows this man who was the portrait of a perfect English butler, but it is following him like as the British country house, manor house, system is sort of falling apart and as the modern way of living kind of comes to be and where, you know, butlers are no longer really needed. And our main character Stevens is sort of looking back on his many years of service and wondering whether all the sacrifices he made in order to be the perfect butler were actually worth it. This delves into some political aspects as well in history and I think it's just such a fantastic read and one that has so much subtext to it, I think. And overall, it's just like one of my favorite classics. All right, and then I have a few fantasy books that have a lot of like magic to them and wonder to them and that I think are just perfect to curl up with for the season. I definitely recommended a few of these in previous like winter book recs videos so you may see some familiar ones. But first up I have How's Moving Castle by Dinah Wayne Jones. This is one of my favorite sort of middle grade novels. It's one that I read growing up when I was like 10 years old and absolutely loved it. Essentially this is set in like a magical world where our main character Sophie is a hat maker at a hat shop and she has the unfortunate experience of getting cursed by a witch who turns her into an old woman. And so she sort of embarks on this journey to figure out a way to reverse the curse and ends up getting embroiled with the famous wizard Howl and starts living in his famous moving castle. From there, she makes a deal with a fire demon and things just kind of snowball and there's a bit of a romance to it as well. Unlike the Studio Ghibli movie that many of you probably have seen, the book actually has a lot more to it, especially when it comes to these side characters. And there's a lot of other like additional storylines happening. Similarly, I have another book that has a movie adaptation, but the book definitely has a lot more to it. And that is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I absolutely love Neil Gaiman books. I definitely think all of them are very like easy to curl up with. They are so magical, but this one is definitely my favorite of his and like the most magical in my opinion. It follows just this young man who discovers this like world across the wall. And he has like this huge crush on this girl who lives in his village. And so he tells her that he's gonna catch a falling 
star for her and ends up actually catching a real woman who is a fallen star. And so he embarks on this journey to bring our fallen star to his crush, but starts to realize that this fallen star is actually like her own person and does not want to be just given to this girl. And from there, it just becomes like a bit of a romance and a bit of just like an adventure story. And it is such a cute and fun novel to read. On a similar cute note, the next book I have is The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is the most adorable, queer, found family story that I've ever read. It basically follows our main character, Linus, who is this like by the book caseworker for the department in charge of magical youth. And he's like 40 years old. He lives with a cat. He doesn't have much going on in his life. And when he is given this like sudden and classified assignment at work to go visit this orphanage where, you know, these magical kids are being kept and he's told to like investigate, you know, the head of the orphanage, he goes on this journey and ends up sort of falling for the head of the orphanage. And from there, it's just this really beautiful story of this found family and this like gay romance. And it just becomes one of those books that just warms your heart so much. And by the end of it, I was just like in tears because I felt so much for this group of characters and I just wanted them all to like have hugs and be happy. All right, the next book is the only YA on this list and it is one of my favorite books ever. And it is one that I cannot stop recommending as the perfect winter book rec. And that is Strange Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. If you've ever read a Lainey Taylor book, then you know she has some of the most gorgeous writing and she writes fantasy books that are just so out of the box in my opinion and takes you on such an incredible journey with such endearing characters and also with some really big themes that will get you thinking. Essentially this book follows our main character Laszlo Strange who is a bit of a dreamer and he is a librarian and he has always been obsessed with this mythic lost city of Weep and it's this magical city whose name was sort of stolen from history and it's been given this like temporary name Weep and when a mysterious delegation from the city comes to Laszlo's town, he takes the opportunity to leave with him and go to the mythical lost city and learn what's going on there. And from there, he sort of encounters a lot of magic and a lot of mystery and lots of other things going on. And there's a bit of a love story to this. And it's honestly just such a beautiful, magical read, but also one that has so many layers to it that when you get to the end of the book, you'll be like, oh my God, like I need to know what happens next. All right, and then the final book that I have on this list is a pretty popular one and one that you can probably guess because I've recommended it in other winter book rec videos, but that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I definitely think this is the coziest of V.E. Schwab's books. And The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, if you don't know, it was very popular a few years ago when it came out. It essentially follows the long immortal life of this woman named Addie LaRue, who many hundreds of years ago when she was a young woman made a deal with the devil so that she could live forever, but the devil in turn cursed her to be forgotten by every person that she meets. And so essentially she lives this long invisible life as she meets people and as they forget her and as she is still forced to continue on living this immortal life. And so we are both following Addie LaRue through her long immortal life, but also following her in the present day when she finally meets a young man who actually remembers her. This is a bit of a love story, a bit of a historical fiction, a bit of a supernatural read. And it's definitely one that feels super cozy and feels like you're snuggling up with a warm latte and a scarf. Like that's the feeling I get when I think of this book. So I definitely think it's a snuggly read to pick up. With that said, those are all of the books on this list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found some new books to snuggle up with this winter. I'm definitely feeling all of the like wintry, cozy vibes now that we are deep into November and now that Christmas is coming up. I'm not a huge like Christmas person, but I do like putting up my tree and just like cozying up. And I'm honestly just so excited for all the downtime that I'm gonna have next month and all the reading that I'm gonna be able to get done before the new year. So as always, if you guys have read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them. And if there are any books that you think I should be picking up for this lovely cozy winter, then let me know down below. And if you haven't already, go check out my Instagram, TikTok, Goodreads and Bindery page where you can get exclusive and extra content from me and I will see you guys in my next video. So please remember that this story ain't over. Bye!